If you don't like wars and the weapons industry, should you talk at events funded by Lockheed Martin, who I do think sometimes make weapons which are mostly used in wars? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million awakening wonders. How I've missed you, how I love you, how deeply I believe in your ability to change the world. In fact, there is nothing else other than you, you, specifically you, that can change the world. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now, lest the algorithm deprive us of our necessary contact at a time when we are awakening together. This video you're gonna love, as a matter of fact, because I'm talking about an event funded by Lockheed Martin, which MSNBC host Rachel Maddow appeared at. I want to say at the beginning, I know loads of you, because I read the comments and do comment for heaven's sake. I know a lot of you have very particular views on Rachel Maddow. Some of you will dislike her and some of you might like her. I actually feel like Rachel Maddow is a nice person. There's nothing to be gained by attacking individuals. I truly believe that. But I do think it's a problem at a time where censorship is being discussed, misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, where it's more and more likely that whole nations and maybe the entire planet will introduce regulation to prevent independent media conveying to you let's call them alternative views. Alternative views that <laughs> usually, necessarily for us, are verifiable because our economic model requires that everything we say to you can be verified. So let's have a look at Rachel Maddow appearing at this event funded by Lockheed Martin and in particular, friend of the show, Max Blumenthal's intervention. He was there on behalf of Grey Zone, an independent media organisation that has a real interest in the motives behind the Ukraine-Russia conflict from a military-industrial complex perspective. As you know, we believe that this war should be peacefully resolved as soon as possible for the people of Ukraine. We believe that Russia's invasion was criminal. And in fact, once you acknowledge that, many, many previous wars that the United States have been involved in look criminal too. That's why they can't testify at the International Criminal Court. So let's have a look at this issue of censorship. Let's have a look at this Lockheed Martin sponsored event and ask, is it responsible for the media to accept funding from the weapons industry? Industry, to use their pundits to convey their views? Or does that mean that they're more likely to promote wars? Because without wars, you don't need weapons, I think. Bent on overthrowing the US government. And members of Congress who are sympathetic... Rachel, this speech is boring and paranoid. Can you explain why you promoted the steel... Why did you promote the steel dossier? He was very nervous in the moment, knowing that he was about to do that, sort of clutching a phone. Oh, I'm going to do that thing. I'm going to do that thing. And on an interpersonal level, I almost feel sort of embarrassed and awkward. And like I keep saying, I think Rachel Maddow isn't a person that should be attacked. I think she's got every right to be a broadcaster. And I think that there is certainly an audience for what she's saying. I'm much more interested in promoting conflicts and allowing people with a vested interest like Lockheed Martin to fund media events without declaring that, claiming that the Ukraine-Russia war is only being perpetuated because of a humanitarian crisis rather than obvious financial benefits to Lockheed Martin. Why are Lockheed Martin even funding events like this? Why? What is the reason? It's because of public perception, isn't it? It's because you need to be perceived as a positive organisation and you need to have influence in the media. Are those the two reasons? Of course it is. Right. Why do you need that? Because we require war and dead children as part of our business model and it makes us look bad. Cool. Right, now we can move on to Rachel Maddow's participation in this event. Is it good? Let me know in the comments. Why did you promote the Steele dossier, which has been proven to be a lie? Why did you promote the lie of no. Russian no. bounties? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Can you Let's go. ever be held accountable for the lies you told Let's Americans? Go. It's very interesting, really, because what Max Blumenthal and the Grey Zone believe is that their views are not being properly represented. That whenever you call out Russia Gate, you're regarded as a conspiracy theorist or right wing. And I recognize some of you are right wing and some of you are conspiracy theorists, damn it. But what's not a conspiracy anymore is that Russia Gate was used to attack Trump throughout his presidency and it proved not to be true. And and it was at least in part funded by the Clinton campaign, which doesn't look good if you think that the Democrat Party are the goodies. And then what also doesn't look good is that Lockheed Martin, who make missiles and stuff that kill people, are funding events like this. I mean, it just simply has to be discussed and pointed out, doesn't it? Now, you might say, oh, we're on Rumble and who's invested in Rumble and stuff like that. But essentially, they're allowing us to say whatever we want to say. And here's what I want to say. War is bad. We shouldn't have many wars. We should have unbiased media. You should allow people you disagree with to speak openly and you should have clear conversations about important issues where you listen to views from across the spectrum. I don't know, is that going to be censored? Is anyone going to cut that out? <laughs> you 
lied to Americans for let's years. Go, let's go. Silence is You're violence, out. Rachel. You're out. Let's have a look at some more details around Lockheed Martin, war and death, and the complex issue of sponsorship and how the agenda of the military industrial complex might be represented in media spaces and soft propaganda spaces. In a separate video at the event uploaded by Blumenthal, he asked a panel about how many bombs by TrueCon sponsor Lockheed Martin were dropped on children in Palestine and Syria. Maddow headlined the event sponsored by defense industry giant Lockheed Martin and Palantir, a $26 billion defense contractor. We're talking really now about the necessity for real institutional change. Attacking individuals is easy, isn't it? And sometimes fun, I suppose. But what's really important is that we have a institutional situation where Lockheed Martin and Palantir can fund events, influence media, control narratives in order to perpetuate or at least participate in and benefit from conflicts. And that doesn't seem like the best way to run the planet in 2023. Even if you just treat it as a national issue affecting you, American taxpayers, because a lot of this money is yours. Now, this is embarrassing because this video is actually sponsored by Lockheed Martin. <clears throat> now, Lockheed Martin's weapons. Oh my God, they're accurate. No, it's not for Lockheed Martin. It'll be some sort of supplement or VPN or whatever. But it's not going to hurt nobody and it's probably going to protect you in some way. Here's other me. I promise I'll make it funny. Thanks, other me. Now, you know we can't make this fantastic content without the support of our sponsors and partners. You might have noticed also that our friends in big tech are not too keen on paying tax. The wankers. And considering these huge American companies have made billions of dollars by selling your personal data, they create a detailed profile about you by taking your web history email metadata and all your video searches. Yes, even that one. It was research. Mm, yeah, well, you can do some more research in prison. And then they sell that profile to the highest bidder. And that's why I recommend using ExpressVPN every time you go online. ExpressVPN encrypts all of your data and makes you more anonymous. And that makes it more difficult for Facebook, Twitter or Google to track your location or online activity. Just download the app onto your phone or computer and then you're protected from greedy corporations with just one tap. That was two. Visit expressvpn.com slash brand to get three months free on a one year package. Now let's go back to that other version of me telling you about, I don't know, don't trust someone or think for yourself. You know what I'm always on about. TrueCon's website describes the conference as an opportunity to see thought leaders across government policy and national security fields speak on the most pressing issues facing America today. What are the most pressing issues facing you? I'll tell you if you like, is that you haven't got sufficient freedom in your own life. You can't live in harmony with nature generally and your own nature more broadly, taking advantage of the many beautiful and incredible advances that science and technology have granted us because the ingenuity in those fields has been centrally corralled into profiteering when it could be used for benefit. And events like this, if you ask me, and I'm just guessing because I've not attended it, always, 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 if you look closely, the agenda is how can we seem like we're doing stuff but never ever address the main problem, which is the kind of, well, here's a good example. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, Palantir have too much influence over American foreign policy. How are we ever going to break that down? Uh, stop accepting funding from Lockheed Martin? Well, I guess that brings this event to a conclusion because they funded this one. At TrueCon, sponsors are promised access to influential conference participants according to promotional materials. Elevate your brand. And <laughs> how much higher do they need to get? They can launch a missile through the sky and kill a kitty thousands of miles away. Elevate your brand, connect with your customers, <laughs> feed your employee pipeline, or if necessary, blow up your enemy's pipelines. Right, kids? In meaningful, exciting ways. I like the way we're doing this. Not only is it full of meaning, it's exciting. Are you talking about sex? reads a Truman brochure marketing sponsorship opportunities for the event. The brochure repeatedly references the advantages of aligning the company's brand with the Truman Center and TrueCon. For Palantir and Lockheed, which are listed as the two top sponsors on the event website, that means enjoying high-level recognition in association with prominent progressive and other Democratic Party-aligned figures. So presumably that's the reason why Lockheed Martin 
paid the money to sponsor the event. Now, when the other participants, including Rachel Maddow, but presumably other significant affiliates of that aspect of the limited spectrum of American political life were participating, were they aware that part of what they're doing is putting their arm around Lockheed Martin and Palantir and saying, we enjoy an association with you as prominent progressive? Where exactly are we progressing towards? Are we progressing towards the legitimization of more complex conflict, the normalization of war, an inability to have a proper conversation about the causes of conflict in regions like Ukraine, and significantly, what's the best way to reach a solution? And are you able to reach that solution when there are powerful vested interests that benefit from prolonged war? Let me know in the chat and comments. Over half of the nearly trillion dollar defense budget goes to contractors, and Lockheed Martin is the top recipient of Pentagon dollars, receiving about $75 billion in the 2020 fiscal year. Lockheed derived 73% of its net sales from the US government in 2022. Imagine if you ran a business, might be a small business, and 75% of your product was bought by one client. Don't worry that that client's not a business and is using money that it got from other people. It's you, by the way. Wouldn't you think that a good relationship with that client was absolutely paramount to your ongoing success? And wouldn't you invest money in ensuring that the media and the government and government figures and more broadly, the public have a positive impression of your organization? The answer, of course, that rhetorical question is yes, you would. And that's exactly what's happening here. So it's not insignificant, is it, that Lockheed Martin are paying for that? And in fact, really, when you break it down, what you're participating in, if you are participating in that event, is the facilitation of more war. And war will always mean death and it will always mean suffering. And of course, it doesn't really seem that what's happening now is what's best for the children of Ukraine or the people of the world. And can you even make out their faces or hear their cries amidst the racketeering and the noise of the cash registers? Can you make out that suffering anymore? Is there anyone that really believes that Lockheed Martin as an institution, not even the individuals within it, wants what's best for the children of Ukraine? Let me know in the chat. The company, however, pours staggering sums of money into influencing the government. Lockheed spent $30 million lobbying the federal government last year. Its biggest area of focus was the defence budget, according to Open Secrets. Well, I would imagine it was, given that's where 75% of their revenue comes from. Oh, you thought because we spent $13 million lobbying the government that the government and ourselves would come together to find narratives that legitimise an ongoing conflict that seems like we're doing it for the right reason. That $13 million was a surprise for your birthday. And you've the drinks over there. In March 2011, Maddow told her MSNBC viewers, defence spending is untouchable because civilian lawmakers defer so deeply to the military and to the former military officers laced throughout the contractor world that if you squint, you would swear that Congress is some lackey puppet parliament in a country where government has taken over by a junta. The Rachel Maddow that said that, surely as she squinted down at Max Blumenthal's press badge, must have felt some echo from the past as the jeers and cheers of the Democrat Party who presumably would have agreed with Rachel Maddow in 2011. Surely somewhere is the remnants, the phantom, the ghost of the sentiment of 2011. Hmm, am I just providing a smokescreen while members of the Democrat Party and officials from Lockheed Martin get together to kill children? MSNBC is owned by Comcast, which is a subsidiary of General Electric, the 14th largest defense contractor in the US. So in a way, just on the basis of competition, they shouldn't be letting Palantir and Lockheed Martin get in the ring like this, right? I mean, how does capitalism work? Many of the retired military leaders employed by MSNBC as paid contributors have secondary affiliations that are rarely, if ever mentioned, leaving viewers in the dark about whose interests they're promoting. None of the leading networks, including MSNBC, makes a regular practice of announcing its military analysts' financial ties to the Pentagon connections that could colour their on-air comments. So there you are. Let me reiterate once more. A personal attack on Rachel Maddow advances nothing. Rachel Maddow is a human being, like all of us, and if you agree with her politically, you probably love her. If you disagree with her, you probably don't. But none of us are that important. Let's face it. What is important is that events of this nature obviously contribute to the ongoing conflicts around the world and as yet uncommenced conflicts with, you know, China, the Taiwan one. You're aware of the one that's coming next. Is it ethical to have events like this funded by Lockheed Martin? Is it ethical for people that have credibility and respect in certain media spaces to participate in them? Is it wise that MSNBC are owned by Comcast, who in turn are owned by General Electric, that the 
the 14th largest weapons contractor. And do you think that these things are a contributory factor in the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Do you think if all of that lobbying money, all of that investment, all of that profit were to evaporate like that, that it might make a difference in the current conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Let me know in the chat and the comments. Because what I believe in is the right for us to disagree politically. The right for us to have as much democracy in our lives as possible. As many varied views, as many ways of being human as possible. And I think that becomes less and less likely when powerful agencies and institutions come together to bypass democracy, particularly when it's at the cost of human life. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and chat. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Remember, turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now. We make this content every single day. Join us over on Rumble. We have so much fun over there. You, whoever you are, wherever you've been, you are welcome there. We love you. More important than any of that, please stay free.